Three Bodies at Matani, by Seth Dickinson. We were prepared to end the worlds we found. We were prepared to hurt each other to do it. I thought Jutenheim would be the nadir, the worst of all possible worlds, the closest we ever came to giving the kill order. I thought that Anya Hera's plea, and her silent solitary pain when we voted against her, two to one, would be the closest we ever came to losing her, a zero-sum choice between her conviction and the rules of our mission. Locate the seed ship colonies, the frozen progeny scattered by a younger and more desperate Earth. Study these new humanities, and in the most extreme situations, remove existential threats to mankind. Jutenheim was a horror written in silicon and plasmid, a doomed atrocity, but it would never survive to be an existential threat to humanity. I'm sorry, I told Anya Hera. It would be a mercy. I know. I want to end it too but it is not our place. She turned away from me, and I remember thinking, it will never be worse than this. We will never come closer. And then we found Mitani. Lachesis woke us from stable storage as we fell toward Periapsis. The ship had a mind of her own, architecturally human but synthetic in derivation, wise and compassionate and beautiful, but, in the end, limited to merely operational thoughts. She had not come so far, Five worlds, five separate stars. So very fast, 400 years of flight, by wasting mass on the organic. We left our flesh at home and rode Lachesis' doped metallic hydrogen mainframe starward. She dreamed the three of us, Anya Hera and Thien and I, nested in the ranges of her mind. And in containing us, I think she knew us, as much as her architecture permitted. When she pulled me up from storage, I thought she was Anya Hera, a wraith of motion and appetite flame and butter, and I reached for her, thinking she had asked to rouse me, as conciliation. We're here, Shinobu, Lakisa said, taking my hand. The last seed ship colony, Mitani. The pang of hurt and disappointment I felt was not an omen. The ship? I asked by ritual. If we had a captain, it was me. Any trouble during the flight? I'm fine, Lakisa said. She filled the empty metaphor around me with bamboo panels and rice paper, the whispered suggestion of warm spring rain, reached down to help me out of my hammock. But something's wrong with this one. I found my slippers. Wrong how? Not like Jutenheim. Not like anything we've seen on the previous colonies. She offered me a robe, bowing fractionally. The other two are waiting. We gathered in a common space to review what we knew. Tien smiled up from her couch her skin and face and build all dark and precise as I remembered then from Lagos in the flesh. No volatility to Tien, no care for the wild or theatrical. Just careful, purposeful action, like the machines and technology she specialized in. And a glint of something in her smile, in the speed with which she looked back to her work. She'd found some new gristle to work at, some enigma that rewarded obsession. She'd voted against Anya Hera's kill request back at Jutenheim, but of course Anya Hera had forgiven her. They had always been opposites, always known and loved the certainty of the space between them. It kept them safe from each other, gave room to retreat and advance. In the vote at Jutenheim, I'd been the contested ground between them. I'd voted with Tien, no kill. Welcome back, Shinobu, Anya Hera said. She wore a severely cut suit, double-breasted, fit for cold and business. It might have been something from her mother's Moscow wardrobe. Her mother had hated me. Subjectively, I'd seen her less than an hour ago, but the power of her presence struck me with the charge of decades. I left a hand, suddenly unsure what to stay. I'd known and loved her for years. At Jutenheim, I had seen parts of her I had never loved or known at all. She considered me, eyes distant, icy. Her father was Maori, her mother Russian. She was only herself, but she had her mother's eyes and her mother's way of using them in anger. You look indecisive. I wondered if she meant my robe or my body, as severe and androgynous as the cut of her suit. It was an angry thing to say, an ugly thing beneath her. It carried the suggestion that I was unfinished. She knew how much that hurt. I'd wounded her at Jutenheim. Now she reached for the weapons she had left. I've decided on this, I said, meaning my body, hoping to disengage. But the pain of it made me offer something, conciliatory. Would you like me some other way? Whatever you prefer, take your time about it. 
She made a notation on some invisible piece of work, a violent slash. Wouldn't want to do anything hasty. I almost lashed out. Tien glanced at me, then back to her work. An instant of apology, or warning, or reproach. Let's start, she said. We have a lot to cover. I took my couch, the third point of the triangle. Anya Hera looked up again. Her eyes didn't go to Thien, and so I knew, even before she spoke, that this was something they had already argued over. The colony on Mitanni is a Duong Watts malignant, she said. We have to destroy it. 